Hey folks, welcome to the season finale of Season Dose. Uh, we're at <laughs> Bruco brewing our own beer. So it's actually it's actually Shield to Field? No, no, no. <laughs> Bruco. Bruco? No. Yeah. No, no, no. That changed. You you missed the memo. We can't call it <laughs> Bruco anymore. No, not anymore. And our audio guy is going to bleep this out. He better. Yeah. <laughs> So it was Bruco, yeah. it's now Shield to Field Bruco. Why the change and where did the new name come from? Okay, so we had to change the name because three weeks into operation, we got a nice, uh, it was actually legitimately was a nice email from another company called Studio Brewing um, saying that they had a trademark on that name. And when we had been branding the year before, um, there had been no social media presence, no web presence since they're in a different province. Even our like incorporation nuance search didn't show it, um, but trademarks are nationwide, and so it showed up there. Uh, so that's why we had to abandon the name Studio Brew, and why Shield the Field? Um, well, letting go of our, our original name was a grieving process that lasted about a week. We got all of our friends and family to give us name ideas, and we had this massive list of like words that we thought could be incorporated into it. And Shield was on the list because. I grew up in Northwest Territories, and my backyard was literally this Canadian shield, sheets of rock. I never mowed a lawn until I was in my mid-20s. Um, <laughs> and field, because that was Brianna's backyard growing up. Um, she lived, grew up in Strathmore, small town Alberta, and everything was prairies. And growing up, growing up in Northwest Territories, every time that I moved further south, it was just uh, getting more and more into prairie country. So um, yeah, that's, that's where it came from. And would you say you've been able to detach from the old name and, and fall in love with the new name, or do you still prefer Studio Bruco? It was a process, but we, we, do, we have fallen in love, love with the new name. A big part of that was seeing the logo. Uh, we have a friend who's an awesome graphic designer, and we had the name, we kind of told her what we were thinking, and, and once she came up with that logo, it just kind of locked it in for us, and we've been all shield the field since. Where did you personally learn how to brew? In my kitchen. I uh, started out, once I, once I developed a, a taste for craft beer, which actually took a while, um, through university it was all cheap crap and I couldn't get on board with that. Um, but once I had a little spending money, once I had a job, that was when I started experimenting and discovered I liked craft beer and that led immediately into me wanting to learn how to brew. So yeah, I started out in my kitchen uh, just with like a, a box kit. So basically just add yeast and make sure you sanitize. And I quickly moved from that into wanting to learn how to brew from scratch. And uh, yeah, the kitchen was where I learned to brew. <laughs> A lot of time there. How many establishments are there in Calgary, Alberta, Western Canada, where the public can just go out for a night and brew their own beer? I would say, like, depending on your definition, if you're talking doing it from a kit where you're just adding yeast and it's pretty uninvolved, there's a few places that can do that. I think they focus mostly on wine, but for what we're doing here, where we're teaching you from scratch how to brew beer, there's nowhere in Calgary. I don't think there's anywhere in Alberta. Uh, as far as Western Canada, I think there's some in BC because their liquor laws have been uh, a little a little more relaxed for a few years, but yeah, we're, we're the only place in Alberta doing it as far as I know. So would you go on record saying Shield to Field Bruco is the only Juan in Alberta? <laughs> How do you avoid the escape room disaster so to speak, and saying that it's an original new idea where everybody's wanting to do it. How do you avoid that oversaturation with the come and brew business model? Yeah, um, I think what we have going for us here is that the entrance barriers are higher. Um, on top of the regular municipal regulations you'd have to have to get a business like this up or a business like an escape room set up, um, there's also liquor licenses at the federal and provincial level, there's Alberta Health stuff. It's just a lot more hoops to jump through. Um, and as well, I would say the knowledge base that anybody working at a place like this would need to have. Um, 
it's it's not like you can just pull anybody off the street to sit at a desk like at an escape room. You, you have to have like a, a depth of understanding to what you're teaching and um, that doesn't come quickly or easily. It's just you have to have the experience. So I think that that's probably what I'm hoping will uh, will prevent uh, an oversaturation of this market. <laughs> Come here for a second. Let me just uh, yeah. yeah dust, dust the shoulder off there. Oh, thank you. Basically, what we're saying is any MF at home can write a riddle and open up escape room, but you can't brew like we do. <laughs> <laughs> now, why the. Can't I drink beer here? Like honestly, I'm the Hemingway of beer making. I need my inspiration. Well, that's something that you're gonna have to take up with the AGLC. I don't write the rules of the liquor license, um, but yeah, talk to them. Although I'm not gonna lie, I kind of support them because by not serving beer here, my business insurance is way cheaper not having to deal with drunk Juan. Yeah, drunk Juan is a liability. He's right. <laughs> that's a very good point. I support this. Coronavirus taught a lot of couples that they couldn't even survive just living together. Meanwhile, you and your wife decided to open up a brand new business. What's the key to making all of that work? Yeah, um, we are super fortunate to have a lot of support. Like our Families are all close by and, well, my parents aren't, they're still up north, but um, we have a lot of family in the city and they're super supportive and um, that makes a really big difference. And on top of that, when we decided we were gonna get into this, we kind of defined what's our worst case scenario. And I mean, what, we spend our life savings, go broke, have to shut down the business and live in our parents' basement? It sucks, but we'll, in the grand scheme of things, we'll be fine. So, I mean, yeah, coronavirus threw a wrench in the gears, but uh, it's, and there definitely has been stress. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm actually more stressed than not, but um, Brianna's great to go through this with. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, couldn't pick a better business partner. So it's, uh, yeah, if anything, it's actually brought us closer together, just having to navigate all this together. So <laughs> roundabout way to answer your question, but there you have it. What's your favorite beer that you've personally ever brewed? Honestly, I these are the recipes you can brew here are like kind of a combination of a lot of my favorites. If I was to pick one, it'd be very difficult, but uh, I, I like the pale ale recipes that we have here. So I'll narrow, narrow it down to those two. I, I started out not really liking anything with hops, but when you brew beer five gallons at a time, you acquire a taste for everything. And I kept trying different styles. So before you knew it, you like everything. Um, but yeah, I really like the pale ale recipes that we have here. That's probably my favorites. And how many recipes do you have? We have 10 recipes and we cover eight different beer styles. Okay. I like that you were able to pick a favorite because a lot of parents have a favorite child. Yep. They do. Yep. They'll never admit it unless you ask my two parents standing off camera. They will admit it. It's the youngest. We know. It's fine. It's okay. But you picked your favorite beer and I can appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Now at the end of the brew, you get to take home approximately 45 cans of beer. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you think the three of us could get together on a Saturday, backyard, kiddie pool, one with the elephant trunk spraying out uh -huh. water, and just crush the entire flat? Well, I do have a kiddie pool. Well, I have access to one. My sister has one. And uh, yeah, I'd love that. I mean, I've been needing to get some slow-mo hair flip shots and I, I need a, an opportunity to do that. So if we can do that, crush some beers, I'm in. Perfect. And uh, I know this is going to air late October. Uh -huh. Does that change your personal opinion? I'll wear a different Speedo, seasonal. Ooh, banana hammock? No, 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 not quite. But okay. it has some nice autumn colors. Okay. You? You're in? <laughs> <laughs> You told him not to no, say. No, it yeah, it was perfect. It was so perfect. I love that. <laughs> Only one take. We one take it, but. <laughs> What's your biggest challenge in finding an audience to come to Shield to Field? Yeah, good question. Um, I guess 
The advantage that we have is that we're the first of our business, but or the first of our kind in Alberta doing this. Um, that's also our disadvantage, though. People don't really know yet that it's an option, um, and and so that's kind of our challenge is, is educating people and being like, hey, there's a lot of you. There's a lot of people out there who like beer, but very few people know how it's made and just letting people know that like it's actually a really cool process and it's worth taking part in at least once like you'll gain a whole new appreciation for your beer and that's that's kind of what what we're working on and that's that's the challenge so One of the funnest parts about the whole Shield to Field experience is you get to come up with your own label. Mm -hmm. What was the funniest label somebody ever came up with? I mean, excluding my own, which I personally am I'm fond of, I would say uh, that we had a couple come in. Uh, the, the lady booked it as a surprise for her husband's birthday party, and she made a kaleidoscope of baby photos for his label, and I love this. It was <laughs> That's probably my favorite one that I've seen so far. Baby photos of him? Oh, yeah all over the label. We have it on our wall of fame. After after this, you'll have to take a good look at it. Absolutely, we yeah. got a picture of that. And then I know we're gonna label some of our beers with Mike's ugly face on it, but <laughs> his baby pictures when he was much cuter. There you go. Yeah. Now this is episode 15 of Cerveza City, and I have asked every single brewery that we've been to previously yeah. whether or not we can put my face on a beer can, mm -hmm. and they have all said no. But now what the heck? that we're making our own labels, can I have my face on a beer can? Well, we have, uh, we have the capa capabilities to put anything you want on a beer can. So I mean, if you really wanted to do that, yeah, like we've had people crop photos that they've got online and added into whatever. And I mean, I have a little example of what we can do. And I mean, I think that looks kind of like your face. <laughs> what the hell? I went through a lot of your videos and did a lot of screen printing and cropping. And uh, there you have it. Don't stop believing Cerveza City Cream Ale. I'm prepared for COVID. I have a sweet mask. This is fantastic. This is going on my wall. I love this. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are That's very so welcome. Cool. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap on season two. I officially got my face on a can finally. It only took 15 episodes, but there it is. Uh, Steven, last 60 seconds are yours. Awesome. Well, I don't know too much more to say. Like we've, we've talked about a lot of stuff. I think we painted a pretty good picture of what we do here and kind of how we came to be. But uh, yeah, if you're out there and you like craft beer, we've tried to pack as much learning and fun and, um, and beer into this as you can. Like you walk home with a lot of it. So um, we'd love if you came and checked us out. We run classes pretty much every weekend and we'd love to see you at one of them. Shield to Field is officially Cerveza City certified. That's the end of season Woo! two. Can we get a uh, clap for Steven and Brianna here? Thank you so much for having us. Hey, stay tuned to our social media. Uh, casting for season three is going to be released real soon. Good night.